So in this video, I'm going to talk about a type of pus called a hadron. Now, the word hadron comes from the Greek word that actually means heavy, and that's how they get their name. And that's because they're the heaviest types of particles, so they're the ones made of lots of quarks, and that type of thing. So, hadrons are the bigger, or, we, or the proper way we refer to them is the more massive particles, because they contain more mass. A few years ago there was a film called Ali G where he's driving on his car and he's got this song going on along that goes, the jungle is massive. And he's absolutely right, the jungle contains lots of mass, therefore it is massive. So not quite what he meant, but it also worked in a physics context. Okay, so there are two types of hadrons. Uh, uh, I'm going to look at these a bit more detail in a second, but the two types are baryons and mesons. It's not, it's not baryons, it's baryons. And it's mesons, that one. And it's very easy to get those mixed up with muons, the type of lepton, so be careful with that. Okay, so the first type we're going to look at, baryons. Now, uh, key things to know about baryons is they, they have three quarks, or they can actually have antiquarks in them, but there's always three of them, whether they're a quark or an antiquark. So, types of baryons, you can have protons are an example. Uh, neutrons, and then you get some more exotic ones like sigma and that sort of thing. So a proton is actually an up quark, an up quark, and a down quark, and then a neutron is an up quark, a down quark, and a down quark. And if you look at the properties of those quarks, you'll see that those the charges of those quarks add up to the charge of a proton or the charge of a neutron. But as you can clearly see, we've got three quarks, which is what makes them a baryon. Now, in the next video I'm going to make, I'm going to take a look at uh, the conservation laws that govern interaction. But an important thing to know for that is that a quark has a baryon number of a third, and an antiquark has a baryon number of minus third. So if we apply that to our proton, so we have an up, an up, and a down. So we said these are all quarks, so they're all going to have a third. So you get a third plus a third plus a third which obviously gives you a baryon number of one. So a proton is a baryon, and it therefore has a baryon number of one, because each of those quarks add up to that, to give you a total of one. So the other type of hadron are the mesons, and these are different because they have one quark and one antiquark, so it's not enough to say they have two quarks. That's not correct. That would not give you a detailed answer to that. The correct definition of a meson is that something that contains one quark and one antiquark. Okay, so there are two types of meson. So there were two types of hadrons, and now we've got two types of mesons. And we've got the pi mesons, which we usually shorten to pi on, and we have k mesons, which we shorten to k on. So both of these have a quark and an antiquark, but the key distinction is that k ons are strange. So that means they contain at least one strange quark. So you might have an up and a strange, or a down and an anti-strange, for instance, but they always contain a strange quark. Um, just a key one to note is that a strange, anti-strange one is not a k-on, because the strangeness cancels out with that. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly draw your attention, not a k-on there. Now, pions are not strange. So you might have, I don't know, an up and a down, or... I don't know, like two downs, two ups, or just like the one above, you can actually have a strange and an anti-strange because their strangeness cancels out, and then you get left over with no strangeness. So those are all end up not being strange at all, which makes them a pion. So there are ways that we use of naming this. So the pions, you can have either a pi plus, which means it's positively charged, have a pi minus, or you can have a neutrally charged pi, which gives it zero, pi zero. And it's the same for the k ons, you can have k plus, k minus, and you can have k zero there. And these are representations of the quarks. So if you have two quarks that add together to give a charge of plus one, that makes a, either a k plus or a pi plus, and that becomes important when we go on to look at the conservation rules, because obviously you need to think about conservation of charge, and that's where those come from. 
So you can get these plus one or minus one or zero from adding together the properties of the quarks that make up that particular meson.